in level fours. We are now coming to our last lesson, which I hope it's a one that is gonna give you insight. This is another favorite one of mine. We're going to be looking at cartoons and pictures and comic strips. Now, and how we answer them in an exam, because this is another part where most of level four students struggle because they don't know how to interpret. I hope I could give you a little bit of insight. So let's start with what is a cartoon. It is usually a one picture containing a few words or a caption and then the effect often comes from the drawing of pictures. Now a cartoon shows the opinion or a point of view of one person and that person is the person who drew the cartoon. Now Cartoons make often fun of people, sometimes government people, sometimes important people, and they draw attention to that which is happening. And you know what is interesting? They also look around, just like a comist and an editor. They look around and find humor in everything that they see, and then they'll draw a picture of that. And you find that there's one very famous one in South Africa called Zapiro. Zapiro is actually writing very interesting ones, but no one questions him. But he likes targeting the government and political people. But anyway, back to comic strips. Comic strips are also very informative. Even those cartoons, just because they're making fun, we learn a few things from them. So if you look at a comic strip, which is a series of pictures drawn in little boxes called frames. That is why when they ask you questions, they tell you, look at frame one, look at frame two, look at frame three, and so forth. Because there's a sequence of the way they tell a story. So the story is told mainly in pictures and a few words, and then the words are usually those that are spoken by the character. Sometimes you'll find thoughts of the characters where you'll find there's a whole caption and a little bit of bubbles inside of it. I hope I can share a few um, examples with you. Now, comic strips can also be printed in black and white. That is just for your information, but not very important. Now, I pulled some of these comic strips from some of the exams that we have done maybe a test or maybe an internal or an external so this is just from our college i would like to kindly ask you the first thing i tell students to do is to really study the comic strip each frame has something that is telling you besides you knowing about the person who has written it this comic strip is titled multitasking now what you do before you read just look at the picture then you also look at the body language. You look at the facial expressions. You look at anything that is added. Is the mouth flat or is it droopy? Look at the gentleman for starters. Then you go to the second frame and see what is different from frame one. What is happening there? If you look at this one, Maybe you can read it, maybe not so clearly. I would read it with you. The gentleman looks puzzled. His eyes look a little bit big and he's got his hand or his finger on his chin and he says, the boss says I'm not multitasking enough. There's an exclamation mark there. When you see an exclamation mark, it means he's really frustrated. Don't know why he feels that way. And then there's a few little dots, meaning he has not finished speaking that a conversation is going. But if you look at the lady listening to him, the lady does not seem excited. And when you fold your arms, there's something you're saying. And another tip I like giving students is asking them, just imagine yourself. Why would you put your hand on your chin or your finger? Why would you fold your arms? All those are things that we should know that the comic strip is also trying. Now let's look at his office. I can see the dustbin is full. There are about three dustbins that are full of paper. If you look at the present table they're standing by, there are lots of papers as well. That is very interesting. Let's look at the second frame. In the second frame, he continues speaking, but now his arms are out there open. I have Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, Yahoo, Gmail, and Google Reader. Oh, and Google, Reader open. Sorry, I'm going to try and read that again. I have Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, Yahoo, Gmail, and Google Reader open while I work. And yet he thinks I don't multitask. And there's another exclamation mark. Now, I want you to look at the lady's eyes. Go to the first 
frame. Her eyes are almost leveled with him. But if you look at the second frame, her eyes, the black spot is rolled up. And then we've got this bubble on her where there are little rounds there with plenty of exclamation marks. That means something. So everything that is happening here means something. Her mouth has not moved except for her eyes. But then we've got added. But if you look at the man, his eyes, arms are out, his mouth is open. Now that we know what is going on there, we have got the idea it's all about multitasking and it is about the gentleman and multitasking. We can go now to the questions. The first questions, if you look at frame one, it denotes that the man is either worried, confused, concerned, or shocked. When you look at him, what would you assume? I hope you agree with me. I will say confused because his finger is out there and he doesn't even understand what is going on. So the correct answer there is B. Then we are told, give a reason for your choice. Now we have plenty of things we could say. Don't go straight away to the words. It is always good when you look at a cartoon to go straight to the physical features. Now what is going to make us know he's confused? Because his finger is on his chin. And when he's there, he's wondering what's going on. And then besides the fact that he says, I I, I, the boss says I'm not motivated. I don't know why he feels that way. So the question, I don't know why, it shows he's confused. So those two are going to give you the two marks that you see there. So don't just say the one, point out the two. Next one, comment on the woman's body language. Now remember, it's two marks. When there are two marks, you need to be very careful. So you need to talk about two things. Now, what is the body language? She stands as though she is so fed up. When you fold your arms, you're almost reaching the end of you. you. The reason you would fold your arms is because you've got lots of questions. So that is the one with the body language. Then let's look at where she's standing. She doesn't seem like she's moving. She doesn't even seem like she's listening, especially when you fold your arms like that. Do you think she's listening? So two things we could say. She doesn't believe what the man is saying and does actually seems like she's agreeing with the boss. That's the reason she would fold her arms and just look straight at him. Let's look at the next one. Explain the humor in frame two. Now. The humor in frame two will come from the writing that is there. I have Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, Yahoo, and all and all. And yet he thinks I don't multitask. What is the true meaning of multitasking? Is being able to do so many things at the same time. But clearly, if you are Googling, if you are on Facebook, if you are on GTalk, are you multitasking? No, you're doing your social work. So that really is the humor part of it. That all these things he mentions are all social things. They're not even supposed to be at work. And what does the boss expect him to do? Clear his desk for starters, arrange the papers, empty the bins, be on his computer typing, and the list can go on. Let's look at the next one. What is the implicit message the boss is trying to send to the man? Remember what we talked about implicit. It is a meaning that you have to figure out. And clearly when we look at this man, he's trying to figure out what the boss is trying to say. So the boss is saying, I'm not multitasking. The boss is trying to tell him, Mr. Your desk is untidy. Your bins are full. You are not even doing the work I expect you to do. That is what he means by multitasking. But you can see the man is so confused, he does not even understand what the man is saying. So the implicit thing that the boss is trying to say is I would like to see you do your work and a little bit of cleaning of your office will be also very good. Don't sit in a dirty environment. Clean it up. I don't think there's anybody who likes sitting in a dirty environment. So why would you not clean up after yourself? Moving along because we have quite something to say. Let's look at the next one. What is the stereotype about the men, about men that is being reinforced here? I hope you realize by now that some of the words we were looking at in the previous lessons are coming back. Multimedia likes stereotyping. So what do you think is the stereotyping here when we talk about this man and multitasking? We all know many men are not good at multitasking. 
but that is generalizing, that is stereotyping. So this is just one of it. So the stereotype that is mentioned here is that we are making judgments that all men can never multitask. So let's go to the next question. Sorry about moving, but I, th I hope this will help you understand and learn how to answer. Do you think that this is true about men? And then we explain our answer. First of all, by us just saying, is it true or not, we get one mark. Then the explaining, we can continue. And I mentioned a few. It might not be true for all men, so that's actually generalizing, because we have men who look after households while the women are working. What does that mean? This kind of men are able to multitask. So, but then, that is one-sided. Some of you might say, yes, it is true about men. Men are not known how to uh, multitask. They can never do this and the other at the same time. Remember, this kind of questions, it is definitely, now this is where the opinion comes, your own opinion. No one is going to judge you, but you'll be judged by how well you support your answer, whether you say yes or you say no. Let's go to the next one, number eight. In frame two, what is the lady's reaction? Why do you think she reacted in this manner? So when we look at her, we can clearly see. First of all, we look at the bubbles in her. What is she, and then the eyes are rolled back. What do we say? Her reaction is showing that she does not even understand what that man is saying. She cannot even believe that the man would be talking or equating Facebook and my space in the same notion. She is wondering, that's why she's got exclamation marks. When you put exclamation marks, what do they mean? You are shocked, you are confused. But confused is not the best one, it is more shocked you cannot even believe what the person is trying to say. I had another word in mind, but I lost it. But anyway, we'll carry on. But most of it, surprised. You are so surprised. You are so shocked that this man would look at my face, uh, Facebook and MySpace and Twitter as multitasking. And then maybe she's also reacting like that because she looks at the office. She finds bins are full. By the time you get three bins full, it shows you're not actually working. So that is why she has that kind of reaction. Let's go to the last two so that we finish. Observe the man's body language in frame two. What three distinct features do you notice? Remember, body language. That is very important because most of you do not understand the difference between facial and body. Now we're going to be looking at his whole body and what he has done. Then we look for three distinct things that he's doing. So, body language. We have one, his arms are out that way. We have his eyes now are so big you can actually see they're rolled back. His mouth is also open, meaning he is really lost and confused. Those are the three distinct. If you compare in frame one and two, the eyes are a little bit smaller, but in frame two, the eyes are big. If you look at the mouth was not opened in frame one, but in frame two, it's opened. Where was the hand? The hand was in his chin, but now the hand is out. That is how you find all those. And when they talk of body, you look at the whole body, not just the face. Finally, in closing, they ask us, do you think he will understand what is expected of him? Again, this is an opinionated answer. So whatever you say, so long as it is in line with what they, do you think he will get it? Some of you might say, yeah, he will get it because probably the lady is going to explain. Some of you might say, no, never. I don't think this man will ever get it. So this is a question that I would like to look at. Never be afraid to air your opinion as long as you stay within the subject line. What is our subject line? The cartoon. And what is a cartoon talking about? Multitasking. Now let's look at a different one now. We are going to look at a picture. Now pictures also send messages, whether you believe it or not. And the first thing you do as well, I would like you to keep your focus on the picture. And then we look at the wordings of the picture. So look at this two. This two, the way we know, they never get along. A big dog and a little cat. But when you see this cat is held nicely in the paws, so it looks a little bit loving. 
and then the cat looks like it's talking. So everything makes sense. You must be very observant. Remember what we said? Critical. Critical in everything that we see and everything that we read. Then it goes, okay, Ralph, let me explain it you again. You are big, I am little, but you're a dog, I am a cat. That makes me the boss. Got it? Now look at all these words. When we look at but, there are so many exclamation marks. And there is a little bit of the wording that does not even make sense there. Instead of saying explain, they say let me explain it to you again. So, and then if you look at the got it, question marks are two. So everything means sense. Now, if you look at this scenario, is it a real scenario in the real world? Most of the times we know they chase each other. The cat is always playing tricks and playing chase me, get me. The dog is always feeling the boss because he's huge, he's powerful. But in most cases, we, do, we choose to differ. And in some homes, you will find that the cat and the dog, they work together very nicely. Now let's try and answer these questions now that we have our thing. This is a different way of answering questions as well. Now the first question reads, read the caption below the picture and then why do you think the cat is saying these words? He is the boss. Is he warning? Is he scared? Is he joking? Is he playing? Now in the real world you must try and equate. If you look at him there, he knows he's tightly squashed in between those paws. If you look at his fur at the back of his neck, it is raised a little bit. That just shows you that how scared he is. So let me just highlight that for you so that you can see it. Look at it here. That fur is raised up. That just tells you the cat is panicking. He is in a stress mode. But for him to be able to look like he's not scared, he wants to be the boss. So the dog, if you look at the dog as well, the dog is just looking at him and thinking, really, do you think you are the boss? Let's go to the next question and see what it asks. What is the stereotype of the animals shown as shown in the picture. The stereotype here about these animals is that the dogs are the masters of the cats. And I think that is why the cat is saying that. He's telling Ralph the dog, listen, everybody knows you're the master. Everybody knows we must fear you. But here, me, I don't fear you. So he's trying to make a statement by making him see. And even if you look at his paw raised, and the dog is looking at him as well, thinking, clearly so, we are always the boss. But sometimes you will find that there are some cats that are more powerful, feared by the dogs. I know that from my sister's um, cat. It's quite a commander. Let's look at the next question. Look at the two animals. Who seems to be the real boss? And support your answer. Now, you will get three marks there. One for stating who looks to be the boss. From where I'm standing, and I hope you're also seeing that, I think the dog looks like he's the boss here. Why would he be the boss? He's got the cat in, the middle, in between his paws. And if you look at the scenario, I don't think the cat will be able to free himself very easily unless he tricks him. I suppose that is why he's talking to him. The other thing is the cat knows that. He knows that the dog is the boss at this point in time because he's caged by him. So what is he trying to do? He's trying to talk him out so that he may loosen up the grip and then run. So how would you answer? The dog is in control. But why is he in control? Because he has the cat in the paws of his hand. I mean, by the paws. And then the other side of it, the cat realizes that. That is why his fur is actually lifted up. And that is why probably he's trying to talk him out so that he may loosen up the grip and he's able to run. So any of those will give you a mark. Let's look at the last question. Comment on the statement below. Why do you think he stresses this? Take care, a careful note of the punctuation. But we've got the exclamation mark. You are a dog, I'm a cat. That makes me the boss. Got it? 
If you look at the punctuation, there are question marks and there is exclamation mark. Now, if you comment on, at this, the cat is trying to say the reason probably, and you might have different school of thoughts. This is another question where we could be open to differing because we are not sure what is going on. So he says, but you are a dog. I am a cat. That makes me the boss. So he's trying to say to him, listen, we know you're a dog. And we all know that you are powerful. We all know you are in charge and in control. The end result means I am little. I am small. I am not powerful. Hence, you need to be able to let me go. Meaning, if you let me go because I am big and you can't fight me, it means I am the boss. Every time you walk away from a situation and there's nothing that happens to you, you become the boss. I suppose that's how parents and children work. When a child is able to get away with a bad deed they have, might have committed, they always feel like the boss. And I think that's what he's trying to say here. That is my point of view. What would be yours? You might see it differently. You might explain it differently. As long as you stay within the cat and the mouse and that statement, having in mind about the punctuation, especially when he says, but, with the exclamations. He's trying to remind him, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Even though you are the boss, just listen to this reasoning. The last one we are going to look at is a comic strip. A comic strip which has got various frames and it's got a various ideas. Now, same thing, like I said before, let us look at the features, let us look at every little thing that is happening there. We will read it together. The first frame it says, someday I'm gonna be super successful. And there's an exclamation mark. It means this girl is believing in herself. And you can see it's like almost she's crying. Look at the eyes of the teacher. Let's assume this is a classroom. Then the second frame goes, let me guess, and that's exactly the teacher, you want to be the richest person on earth. And then the girl is so surprised at the response and says, oh no, Baldo, that would be greedy. I'll settle for the rich person in North America. Now, when you look at the, look at the frames and the exchange, especially of the girl. In the first frame, she's crying-ish. Then she doesn't appear in the second. and the third one, her eyes are big. Her mouth is wide. Her hands are moving now. And then if you look at the last one, she has a smile on her face, meaning she is satisfied. If you look at the teacher, starts with big, bold eyes. And then she's in, a little bit having an inquisitive mind. And then she opens her mouth. She, I mean, her eyes are big. And then you look at the last frame, she is surprised. Now, let's look at the questions. Let's see if we can be able to nail this one. And I'm going to hope that we are going to match and go through it very quickly. Describe the facial expression conveyed in frame one by the teacher and the pupil. Now, this is very important. Most of you students, try not to focus on the face. It says facial expressions, meaning you stay around the face. Don't go below the neck, because that's not the face. So if we look at the facial expressions, I'm sure you have a few. I don't even want to help you with that question, because I know exactly what you're going to say. We have mastered this now. We can look at the mouth, the eyes, the nose, and everything that is going. I'm going to just run right through to the second one, because I know by now you know how to answer. What is the message conveyed by the cartoon? Once you read it through, especially the last line, I'll settle for the richest person in North America. What does that mean? Is it wrong to be rich? Is it bad to be rich? Or what is happening? And look at the third frame. The girl says, oh no, Baldo, that will be greedy. What does greed and rich has to do? What is she trying to say? Those people that go for so much and chase so much money, they are actually denoting greed. But if you just settle for enough, you need to have a lot, but not too much, just enough. That is what the message is coming along here. That if you are going to have so much money, what does that say? You are greedy, but you need to have just enough. Question is, do you agree with that opinion? 
it's worth debatable. So you see how opinions differ. The next one, refer to the caption in, on frame three. What does she mean? When, that one we have just answered right now, I have mentioned. That would be greedy. It means if you have too much, it shows how greedy you are. And most of the people probably they have a lot and they're not able to share with those that do not have enough. But it is debatable. Next, comment, that is number four, comment on the facial expressions of both the teacher and the student in frame four. Now, what I want you to do is to look at the two facial expressions. And when you look at the facial expressions, they totally differ. Remember we said we are staying with the face. So what are you going to be looking at? The mouth, the eyes, and the nose, everything. Don't go below the face. And you, how you do this is you compare it to the other frames. Preferably frame three, which is a follow-on. You, if you compare, you'll be able to judge it very well. And for you to be able to get two marks, you better be able to describe it very well. Let's look at the next one, number five. And we are about to finish. Do not give up. What is your opinion on the statement that would be greedy? This is definitely up to you. Share your opinion without fear because it's up to you how you feel about that statement. The next one seems to be almost the same. Do you think many people in the world today are greedy? That is totally up to you. Again, you share your opinion. You can say yes or no and explain why you say yes or no. Finally, the last question. Somebody, I'm gonna, someday, sorry, I'm gonna be super successful. Do you think this statement is objective or subjective? And then you give your reason for the answer. What is your take on this one? Someday I'm gonna be super rich. That, in my opinion, is subjective. Why? Because she's anticipating she's gonna be rich someday. And that is how she feels, whether we agree with her or not. And we can see from the frame, the teacher was also shocked. And the teacher said, let me guess, the richest person in the world. What does that mean? She did not agree with her opinion or decision. So I hope I have been able to share a few of the lessons that you will be able to be comfortable when it comes to answering the question at the end of the year. We did a bit of paper one. We did a little bit of paper two. And some of it is assignment two, hoping that you will be prepared. If you have any questions, any at all, please do look at the screen, at the information on the screen, and feel free to ask those questions. We shall be more than welcome to answer those questions for you. I hope you learned a lot. I hope to hear from you. From me, is goodbye.